Now you might be wondering why exactly do we have this get current user function when all it really does is just call verify access token. We could completely just remove this and just call this directly whenever we want to authenticate a user. And you absolutely could at it, with the current implementation. But the idea behind the get current user function is that uh, once the verify access token uh, re uh, returns the token data, which is the ID, the get current user function should actually fetch the user from the database. Uh, and so that way we can attach the user to any path operation and then we can perform any necessary logic. Now you don't actually have to fetch the user here. Uh, it's up to you how you want to implement this. If you want each of your path operations to fetch the user themselves, they have the ID so they can do it themselves. However, if you wanted to automatically do it here, you 100% can do that. And so I'm going to show you guys how you can do that in this lesson. And so keep in mind, we get the token data back, which is going to be nothing more than an ID. And what we're going to do is, first of all, uh, we need access to our database so that we can fetch the users. So from here, I'm going to import database. And within this function, we can pass in uh, the, uh, the dependency so that we can actually get access to the DB object. So I'll say depends. And then we're going to access database dot. And I already forgot the name of the, the function. What is it? Get underscore DB. So get underscore DB. And we'll say DB session equals. And then we have to import session from SQL Alchemy. And so now we can make requests to a database. And what we're going to do here is, first of all, I'm no longer going to return that directly. And I'm going to say token equals, and then we're going to call the, this function right here, verify access token. All right, and since we have access to the token, what we can do now is we can say db.query. And then we have to import models. And I'm not sure if we've done that already. We haven't, so I'll import models. I'll say models.user.filter. And then we want to filter based off of the ID. So I'll say models.user.id equals equals token. And then we just grab the ID field. And then we're going to grab the first one. And then we can return the user, which I forgot to save it. So user is going to be equal to the result of that. And if you want to, you can print user here, but um, I already know this is going to work. So we can just go and save this. And then in our post.py, right, when we call this uh, dependency right here, it's no longer returning the user ID. So I don't think it's, it's a good practice to call this user ID anymore because it represents a user. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call this current underscore user, and we're going to rename this everywhere. All right, and then here within the function, I'm going to print out current underscore user. And so if I try to create a post now, and then open up my console, you can see that it printed out the user object, which is not very helpful, but uh, what we can do real quick is, I'll just say current.user.email. We can see the email of that user. Just to verify that we are actually getting the user, and we can see that it does print out the email. So that's ultimately why this function exists, because normally here, this is where you query your database to grab the user, and then you return the user. And then whatever you return here, is ultimately what allows any of your other routes to get whatever you're returning. So since we're returning a user, we're going to store it as a variable called current user.